Well, today's a special day because although I'm in an absolutely beautiful location somewhere in Texas, I'm not going to talk about the scenery or nature or travel or trailers or anything like that. I'm going to talk about cameras because I've had a lot of viewers asking me what kind of cameras do you use for your videos? And I did a video a long time ago about uh, taking travel videos with cheap cameras. I can't remember the title, but I'll, I'll put it up here. And I never updated that. Well, things have changed considerably since then. Camera equipment can be simple or complex, depending on your needs, ability, and budget. Now the first thing is where I'm at now is the perfect location for this video because I have this really nice table but it's not a table it's a bear proof storage unit in a campsite and it just happened to be the perfect height that I can spread out all my cameras so as long as a bear doesn't attack me while I'm filming this I can show you all my lenses and the special cameras I use as well as the one that's on the tripod now and also the one filming the one that's on the tripod right now. I got a lot of cameras. Because I like to try new things, my camera equipment expanded as I explored photography's possibilities. Well, I'm not gonna cover everything, but I'll at least give you the basics. And the first camera I wanna talk about is this one here. And this is my Sony 4K, it's an FDR AX33 I believe. Yeah, that sounds right. And this is a camcorder. Now, the one thing I really like about camcorders is that in one operation, one, you can look and press the button, two, and you're shooting. I can shoot you right now. I hope you're smiling. They're simple, easy to use, compact, they pan well, you can see what you're viewing on a screen you can look at a viewfinder and you can turn it the other way so if you're doing a selfie you can see what you look like these are really good cameras i strongly recommend them uh, i think this model is still available and uh, the disadvantage is you only get one lens but it's a good zoom lens and uh, it does macro as well there's a lot of other features I haven't mentioned, so please visit Sony's website. Now, there's a story about buying new camera equipment these days, which I think you should know. When I bought this, I was really happy with it, paid full price, used it for a year, and before the warranty, the one year warranty was up, there's a few screws loose, and I thought, well, take it, and while well, it's still under warranty, uh, get it adjusted. So I shipped it to Sony, paid, it, paid with it for my, with my own money, and uh, a few days later I got an email, and it said, we will not honor the warranty. Why? Because it had a few dings on the lens and stuff like that. So, now I know that if you're a, somebody that uses a camera a lot, if you just place it on a display case and you polish it or clean it with a, with a feather duster every once in a while, you're probably good for that warranty. But if you actually use it and use it hard like I do because I climb mountains and I travel back roads and it's super hot and it's super cold and the snow and the sand and everything I put my cameras with, uh, through, then chances are when you bring it back to them, the warranty will not cover it. So as far as I'm concerned, a warranty to me is not worth the price of the paper it's on. So, I've learned, and that's where we go to my other camera, which I'm filming with now, and plan B for buying a camera. So now I've switched cameras and I'm filming with a Sony camcorder so that I can show you my other camera, which is actually my prime camera right now, and it's a DSLR called a Sony Alpha 7S II really high quality camera, professional grade, weighs a ton, far too many features than I'd ever be able to use. But what I really like about this is it's got interchangeable lenses and it's programmable for like time-lapse photography and all stuff like that. There's a lot of options for a camera like this 
And by the way, the S is for sensitive because it's got a special sensor for low light conditions. So that's what I use for my star shots, uh, for nighttime scenes, and wherever you need that extra little bit of oomph in your low light pictures, this camera is perfect for that. One key feature for me was the sensor. It was full frame, just like the old 35mm roll film cameras used to be. Now, it is very, very expensive. So how did I get this? Easy. I did not buy it new. I bought it used. And that's the key. Because in the way I use my cameras, the warranty, is, as I already said, is worthless. So I might as well save a few dollars. And I probably saved about 1500 If you're interested, I definitely recommend checking out Sony's website for more details on this camera. Now, as I mentioned, this is a professional camera. And most professional cameras, you only buy the body. You don't get the lens. The lenses are separate. And a lot of the lenses are worth more than the body is. There's some really expensive Sony lenses. But I had a little trick up my sleeve as to how I could get lenses for this camera and not pay a fortune. So here's the lenses I use with this camera. Now, I do have one Sony lens, which I bought used. I got it for about half price. And it's a zoom lens. And it's, I think, 28 to 70. So it's a mild telephoto to a mild wide angle, or vice versa, whatever. Autofocus, really good lens. Um, I don't really use it an awful lot. If I'm just walking around and I don't know what I'm going to use, then something like this is a good idea especially because it's autofocus and it's dedicated to the camera. But all of these lenses, I know it seems a little excessive, but wait till you hear this. The reason I got these lenses is because I found out that you can get an adapter, which I've got right here, on this Sony camera, so you can use old SLR lenses, single lens reflex lenses, from the 70s and 80s off those old film cameras that everybody's throwing away now. So I would pick these up at garage sales. And that is the phenomenal deal. I think every flea market in the country has a large selection of old 35 millimeter lenses that sellers are just dying to get rid of once everybody went digital. I have a 50 millimeter Minolta lens f1.7 which is really good for low light i paid twenty dollars for this at a flea market to better explain what the different lenses do i'll put some examples of every different focal length so you understand how it changed the perspective now this one is my 50 millimeter lens which is the standard lens for a full frame camera but my favorite lens by far is this little guy here, which is a 20 millimeter wide angle lens. Again, by Minolta. In its day, it was probably six or $700. Very, very expensive lens. A friend of mine picked it up for $10 at a garage sale. Now this is my 20 millimeter wide angle lens. And as you can see, it gets most of the trailer in and a bit of the background as well. I've got a fisheye lens made by Pentax. It's a fisheye Takamar. Um, about a, I think it's about a 170 degree high quality. I got this at a, at a used furniture place for about $40. And this is the fisheye, which gets a lot of background in there. So much that it tends to distort. Let me show you a different angle of this so I can show you what I mean. Now, as you can probably see, my trailer looks a little funny because although it's a triangle, now it has curves on it. And that's the distortion of a fish eye lens. As far as faces go, you can make yourself look really weird, although I probably look weird normally anyway. Whatever, the good thing is, 
that in my editing software, there's a filter that I can remove that distortion, just like this. Uh, a 135 lens. I think I got this for free. It was being thrown out. But the one I use mostly for nature is this nice little compact 200 millimeter. It's a MD Tele. Uh, it's a Minolta lens again. I think I paid $20 for it. High, high quality. Really good for birds and, and uh, animals at a distance. And you're not carrying the weight of this thing around with you all the time. And this one here, my 400 millimeter telephoto. Perfect for birds. I got this for free because it was in somebody's garage and they never used it. So I use this a lot for nature photography. I mean, I probably invested tops like $200 in these lenses. But look what I've got. Look how versatile it made the camera. This video is too short to show all the benefits of each lens, but let me at least show the results in sequence. First, the fisheye lens, the 20 millimeter lens, the 50 millimeter lens, the 135 millimeter lens, the 200 millimeter lens, and finally, the 400 millimeter lens. But I also had a teleconverter making it an 800 millimeter lens. And even though I used a tripod, it still jiggles in the wind. Now I'm sure there's some skeptics out there say, no way, you can't buy all that equipment and say it's the same quality as today. There's got to be a catch. And there is a catch. Because all these lenses except the Sony are manual lenses. Manual focus, manual aperture. You have to know old time photography to use these. And because I did have a camera in the 70s and the 80s, and because I shoot videos, it was easy for me because I don't have to fumble with the controls all the time. I can just set it, especially if I'm taking something at, at distance, it's always at infinity, so there's nothing there. Apertures I'm used to, so yeah, there's a catch. You gotta know photography to use these older lenses. But what a saving. There's one distinct disadvantage with a complicated camera like this, and I call it the fumbling effect. It's when you see that once in a lifetime shot and you're stuck fumbling with the camera, fumbling with the knobs, and that shot is long gone. There's something to be said for point and shoot sometimes. Well, before anybody throws away their money on photographic equipment and cameras, reality check, money will not make you creative. It will not make you a good photographer. Certainly having a good camera helps, but the creativity comes from your own imagination. It comes from practicing, trying different things, experimenting, doing a little bit of research, seeing what others have done, um, look at the masters. That's how you get good pictures. The camera, it's just a tool. Well, there you go. Now you know what it takes for me to do these videos as far as photography equipment goes. And that's just the basic items. I haven't even talked about sports cameras or microphones or lighting or tripods and all that. The list just goes on and on. I have a lot of equipment because I want the best for my videos. And hopefully you recognize it in the quality of my photography. But whatever catches my eye, it's my sincere hope that you find it colorful, suspenseful, diverse, curious, intriguing, tranquil, magical, or just plain silly. Space. The final frontier. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll check out my others as well. Happy camping and always keep your lenses clean.
Now it's time for me to go out and take some pictures. Stop telling everybody I'm so expensive. It's not my fault. Oh, Alpha, you're so sensitive. <laughs>